For one of my classes, we had to make a demo that would show the conversion of electrical energy into kinetic energy. So naturally, I decided to make a gun. If you place a metal rod next to an electromagnet and then turn that on, it'll be attracted towards the middle of the electromagnet, and if you leave the electromagnet turned on, it'll oscillate back and forth, eventually settling towards the center. But if you switch the electromagnet off, just as the metal object reaches the center of the coil, it'll fly right out the other end. This is the circuit that I designed to control the electromagnet, then I laid it out as a PCB and produced it on a mill. Now the circuit is almost complete, it just needs one more component. This diode is to protect the MOSFET because when you turn off an inductor, it will try to resist the change in current, which will produce a large negative voltage spike. Now it's finally time to power the circuit. The microcontroller just needs 5 volts, which I can get over USB, but the coil itself needs a higher voltage, and that's where this power supply comes in. It can't supply very much current though, which is going to be an issue. To solve that, I've got this giant capacitor. By putting it in parallel with the output, it can provide high currents for a short amount of time. Alright, let's get down to brass tacks. So the way my circuit works is you hold down the button, the red light will flash three times, and then it will switch the MOSFET on for exactly 11 milliseconds, powering the coil for exactly the right amount of time. I 3D printed this little attachment for the electromagnet, which allows me to load in a ball bearing. Now I can finally test it out. First I turn on the power supply, let it charge up to 50 volts, engage safety squints, and... Well, that was disappointing. In case you missed it, here it is again. So I have a solution that I think will work. Instead of using these ball bearings, I've prepared a few small metal rods, and I 3D printed a new attachment that's big enough to hold the rods, and I think this will work because the rods will be under the magnetic field for a longer amount of time. actually kind of hurt. Well, I'm glad to see that it's working with the metal rods. Let's shoot some more things. I don't even know why I have these, but I have these 3D printed fists, so let's shoot them, I guess. I'm interested to find out how fast the projectile is moving when it leaves the coil, and I've worked out an easy way to do this. If I fire the projectile straight up, all I have to do is measure the height. This works because, initially, the projectile has only kinetic energy, and then at the very top, it has only potential energy, from gravity. 
Kinetic energy is given by the formula half mv squared, and potential energy is given by the formula mgh. By setting these equal, we can cancel out the mass and rearrange it in terms of velocity. I measured that the projectile went approximately 60 centimeters high, so if I sub that into the equation, I get a speed of 3.4 meters per second, or 12 kilometers per hour, or 7.5 miles per hour which is just in the sweet spot of being not too dangerous that you can't play with it, but not too not dangerous that it's not fun. Speaking of safety, when working with large capacitors, always remember to fully discharge them when you're finished using them. If you want to know how to make this project using cheap, generic parts, including, but not limited to, an Arduino Uno, 9V battery, a solenoid from Amazon, and other parts you might already have, then be sure to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.